so good afternoon so once again i'm kate and uh, we are going through the second essay today in biology and today we are going to cover the adaptation features the adaptation features of prey and predators So, for this one, we have to look at the physical characteristics of the different animals and also the adaptive features to their environment that enhance their survival. So, we are going to look at two things. How the prey are adapted to survive against the predators and also how the predators are adapted for them to catch their prey. So the first thing that we are going to discuss is the adaptation of the prey. So what helps the prey to be able to survive against the predators? So we are going to look at both the physical characteristics or the makeup of the prey and also how they are related to the environment to still enhance their survival. So number one, and so as we are talking about prey and predators for prey, I want us to put in mind some examples like the zebras, the antelopes, the wild beasts. And so the first thing is that they are swift, swift or speed. So that being our number one characteristic, now how does their speed or their swiftness enable them to survive? So this one we have, we also have to look at what part enhances their speed or how is that part also adapted to enhancing their speed. So for swiftness or speed, we can say that prey, so for the prey, Have. So prey have the ability, they have the ability to run fast, to run fast over long distances and periods of time. period of time and so if they are able now to run fast and over long distances and periods of time now how are they able to survive so if they're able to run fast over long distances and periods of time they are able to escape to escape the predators which may not cover which may not cover very long distances. Then now, that is our first characteristic. Then number two, we have camouflage. So the first thing we need to understand is the meaning of camouflage. So what is camouflage? So generally, camouflage, this is the ability, ability of an organism of an organism to take similar characteristics, similar physical appearance, similar physical appearance as the surrounding, 
similar appearance as the surrounding environments. Now, for example, now, if we were to look at some animals like the antelopes, which have a color that is either brown or beige, we have that that color is similar to the grass in the environment because most of them are actually adapted to savanna grasslands. So if you look at the appearance of the young color, it is similar to that of the grass that surrounds them. So now how does that facilitate their survival? So now with camouflage, we can say that this helps the prey to hide. From, to hide from the young predators, to hide from the young predators. So we have camouflage, we have speed or swiftness. Then we can look at another characteristic. Another characteristic that they have, we can say that they have a sharp sense of smell. <laughs> now, if most of you have watched many of the documentaries that are there for the prey and predators, if you look at most of the animals, even before they identify their enemy, they are able to sniff around and they are able to detect that there is a certain smell that is related to a certain animal or predator. Now, the sharp sense of smell means that they can detect the smell even when the predator is very far from them. So we can say that the sharp sense of smell enables the prey enables the prey to detect presence of a predator even in a long distance range. And then now, what do they do about that? So after detecting the smell, what do they do? So when they detect the presence of a predator, even in a long distance range, they are able to escape, to escape being captured. So that is uh, the third characteristic or adaptation. Then, what other characteristic do they have? So now, number four, enhanced. We have enhanced balance. Enhanced balance. So now, if you look at many cases where prey are being chased by their predators, you can tell that they are able to, you know, to maneuver or to even get away from their predators at ease. Why? Because they have very stable balance due to strong muscles that they have. So the enhanced balance, we can say this is due to, this is due to, stable and strong muscles in their limbs that enable them
So that is another characteristics that they have. Then from there, we also have some characteristics that now have been adapted by the general prey, whereby number five, we have a, char a characteristic where we can say that they have planned social associations. Now, what do we mean by social associations? So now here, it is where we find out that a prey is able to evade, ama to escape from a predator, not just on its own, but due to the help of other prey or working as a group. Now, in most cases, you find out that uh, most prey do not exist alone in the uh, environment. So they are found in large herds. And what now, that is what we call planned social associations. So this is where you find that prey, because they are able, they, they, they are able to understand that once a prey is found as a loan or existing on its own, it is very easy to be captured by the predator. So what do they do? They work or they graze in herds and also move in herds. So this enables them to be able to tackle the predator. For example, in the cases of uh, wild beasts, most of them, especially even due to their sizes, just two of them against maybe one lion, you may find that they are able to form a kind of a, a, a kind of play game whereby one wild beast faces one direction and the other wild beast faces another direction. So once a predator tries to attack one, the other wild beast is able to tackle the prey from the other side. So now, having planned social associations, we can say, therefore, so having planned social associations, we can say that it allows, it allows the prey to face the predator to face to face the predator as a team and can either chase the predator away is the predator the predator away or or prevent it from attacking so that is the other characteristic then we can also have another characteristic whereby we can say that high reproductivity rates. So what do we mean by high reproductivity rates? Now most prey, uh, they are able to understand that they are easy, they are an easy target of many of the predators. For example, you may find that an antelope is prone to attack by a hyena, is prone to attack by a lion, or is even pr prone to attack by cheetahs and leopards. So what do they do to, to, avoid, to avoid their uh, extinction? So what they, have, they do is that they, produ they produce, they reproduce at very high rates. And that is why you find out that for you to find an antelope, they occur as many as they can as compared to just one herd of lions or even a cub or cubs and cheetahs. So the high reproductivity rates enables, so this one enables the prey to exist, to exist in large numbers.
to avoid their extinction to avoid their extinction so that is also another characteristic now the other thing now is so we have seen some of the characteristic that the prey have adapted in order for them to survive from their from uh, their predators now we also have some although not all we have some prey for example the small prey like the rabbits and moths so they have a different mechanism for them to survive so most of them you find out that they create their habitats underground so this one is able to prevent them so you will find out for something like a mole it can make a very small hole underground so if anything maybe like we have the wild dogs that are so common or their most uh, meal is from small animals so you find out that something like a wild dog cannot get into a hole that a mole has made so that one also helps these small prey to be able to escape from their predators. So we can say burrowing, burrowing. Then we can state that this is an adaptive feature. An adaptive feature by small prey such as rabbits and moles moles or even concubines where they make they make the habitat so they make the habitats underground Underground. So this prevents them, this prevents large prey, large predators, prevents large predators from accessing entry and thus making it hard for them to be captured yeah so those are some of the characteristics we have for prey then now from there we can go to the adaptive features of the predators Predators to survive on. So you may find out that some of these characteristics are similar. For example, something like speed, it is common to both because you find that even a predator, something like a cheetah, which has been named to be one of the fastest animals in the world, which means it also has an equivalent or even a higher speed than some of the prey. Something like the color or camouflage, you find that some of the like something like a lion has a brown color which is also similar to the grasses in the environment they live in if you go to something like cheetahs and leopards they have spotted they have spotted skins or fur which now 
makes or it helps in confusing the prey so you find that the more spotted a hyena or rather a cheetah and a leopard is it becomes hard for them to be able even to differentiate between dried trees and maybe leaves in the in the environment and then so we can start by saying we have high speed high speed tolerance then we can state that most predators most predators e.g. the cheetahs are able to run at a very high speed and out goes out most prey this enables them enables them to catch their prey at ease catch their prey at ease so that is the first characteristic and then number two we can go to camouflage we go to camouflage so as similar so just the way uh, we saw in prey now in this case we have that prey the predators have skin skin or fur with a similar color to that of the surrounding environment environment which enables them to take enough time to creep through grasses and reach and reach their prey and reach their prey without being noticed. So this is just one example for something like maybe a lion. We have also seen that for something like cheetahs and leopards, they have spotted skin which confuses the prey so that they're not able to know whether it is maybe something like dried trees and bushes around them. If we also look at the case of the polar bear, now as something like a polar bear is white in color and you find that it is adapted to living in most areas that are filled with snow, or ice now most of the ice or snow is white in color so in such polar areas we find that most of the animals that are there the something like the seals that are found in such regions they cannot be able to identify a beer from far because they may just think it is something like an iceberg so for something like a polar beer this gives it an advantage because when it is approaching something like a seal, the seal may take time before it realizes that a polar bear is coming towards it. Then we can also have another characteristic. We can have sharp eyesight so how does sharp eyesight help the predators to catch their prey so you have sharp eyesight so this one this facilitates so 
So this facilitates the predators in identifying prey from a very from a very long distance even when even when the prey cannot see them so what how does this help so for this one because we are saying that when they identify a prey from a very long distance and maybe the prey is not aware that maybe a predator is watching so now the predator so the predator the predator therefore has enough time to close the gap before the prey identifies it making it easy to catch the prey so that is our third characteristic so that characteristic then number four we can also have uh, another characteristic where we can say for because there are different types of predators we have bird predators we have the normal earth animals but before that we can talk of a characteristic where we have that some of the predators have strong paws so how does this enable the predator also to catch their prey so for strong paws it enables the predators predators to tightly to tightly hold onto their prey once they pounce on them once they pounce on them therefore therefore the prey is not able to escape is not able to escape is not able to escape even when in motion so that is also another characteristic then we can have a another characteristic where predators have sharp canasia teeth so for most of teeth if you realize in most cases when most predators catch their prey, they attack the neck. So they have to bite the neck in order either to cause a blockage to prevent air flow or to cause hemorrhage within the prey, the prey that has been caught. So the sharp canasio teeth facilitates the predator. The predator to cause hemorrhage on injury of 
of the crate. Or to block the airway. Making it easy to weaken your prey. Making it easy to weaken their prey and therefore it cannot escape. And also other than that, the canossi teeth also enable they also enable the predator to tear off parts of fresh from the prey. So those are some of the characteristics. Then we can also have uh, some others still on the predators. No, for cases of birds like the eagles, we can have a characteristic. We have a swift, or we can say light light bodies light bodies so this is in cases of flying predator so in most in most flying predators in most flying predators such as hawks and eagles So, in most flying mm -hmm, predators such as hawks and eagles, they have a hollow, a hollow air tube in their bodies, which enable them. Fly to fly swiftly and sweep and sweep and sweep in the prey and fly up with them. Now, in this case, we have a for most birds, such as the hawks and the eagles, you'll find out that they have a lining on their back that is hollow. So that part that is hollow, what happens that they have, it is occupied with air. And as you know, air is light. So this enables the birds to be able to fly even at very high altitudes. So when the bird goes and swipes maybe its prey, maybe from the ground or wherever, it is able to again fly up with the prey even if the prey is heavy so uh, so they are prey and they are able to fly up with them uh, then maybe we can look at the last characteristic where we have still on the flying prey they have strong muscular strong muscular wings so these ones they enable they enable, they enable the prey, the predator, they enable the predator to hold on over long distances. While carrying their prey and 
Listen. Boosts. The sweating power. So, so these are some of the characteristics that we can see or the adaptive features of the predators and the prey and due to the due to time we can reach at that point maybe we can add some maybe in the next lesson but those are some of the major characteristic or adaptive features that the prey and predators have taken for them to survive or for them to acquire their meals thank you